These are some gaming headphones from Thermaltake that I've been testing for the last four or five weeks, and I really wanted to recommend them to you guys, but unfortunately, I just don't think I can do that. So let me explain why. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean, and today we're looking at the Thermaltake Shock XT virtual 7.1 surround sound gaming headset. I don't know why these product names are so long, but this particular headset in Australia right now goes for around about $89 and plugs in by USB and it has virtual 7.1 surround sound, as the name of the product probably suggests. Now, I'm in a bit of a pickle because I've been recommending and suggesting Thermaltake products and components like their coolers and their power supplies to friends and family or even when I was working in PC shops for a long time just because I've always had a really good experience with them will take. I've never had anything of theirs fail. It's just been a really solid um, experience the entire time. And they've been a company that's been in Australia for such a long time too that I don't feel like they're going anywhere and they do care about, um, I guess, the Australian PC enthusiasts, I guess, to an extent. And they're always innovating. They're always putting out new products and they're always doing things that I think push the industry forward. And lately they've been getting into the peripheral game. They've been doing headphones and mice, keyboards. You guys would have might have, you guys might have seen on the channel a while ago, I did review a Thermaltake keyboard and mouse, um, which I think was their first. And it was, uh, it left a bit to be desired, um, I guess. And these particular headphones, I feel a similar way. I felt like, on paper that everything was really exciting, you know, for the price to get something like this with 50 millimeter drivers, um, good design, good shape, something that looked really, really good in the images, and then to actually receive it and be testing it, now I feel a little bit differently. So before I, I guess, explain why I'm in such a pickle about these particular headphones anyway, let's go through some of the specs and features that I know you're probably wanting to, I guess, hear about. The fact that these have a 50 millimeter driver in Australia costs $89, have a bi-directional microphone that swivels down and swivels up uh, when you wanna get it out of the way is quite nice. The microphone as well has a, you know this little sort of flexible tip on it so you can bend it around and it can be in front of your mouth. Um, the headband, I mean, it's all pretty much just plastic and soft plastic all over the place. You do get some sort of fabric on the inner part of the headband and also some fabric on the outside with that then we'll take, um, I guess, logo embossed in the top there, but there's really not much cushioning. Um, for the ear cups, they're kind of a, I don't know, a bit of a retro design. They're kind of like square or almost, not exactly square, but a little bit off square. Um, and you've got some little, you know, PU leather, fake leather um, cushioning on there, which does feel okay on the ears, but they're not the most comfortable pair of headphones that I've ever worn. Um, I guess I'm comparing my experiences to things like the Logitech G Pros, the old ones, uh, the G935s, a pair of headphones that I've had from Thronmax that are all, I guess, more expensive than these headphones, but that's the only real comparison that I have to go off. Um, I think the cheapest pair of headphones that I had tested that are similar are the G432s, which I did like, um, but they're not my daily drivers. So. For $89, you know, the materials, the, the feel, the function of these headphones aren't great, um, but they're not bad either, they do the job. What I probably noticed the most with these headphones when I actually had them on was this top headband piece here. There's not really much cushioning up the top here at all. And so they do, you know, feel quite nice on the side of my head, but it does start to sort of feel like they're weighing down, they're digging in a little bit, and it doesn't feel like there's really much cushioning. Like I can feel, um, I guess, the internal steel or plastic frame, um, I guess, you know, without much effort. And these have only just been on for a few seconds. G'day guys, so Future Sean here, and currently what we're doing is the microphone test for the Thermaltake Shock XT gaming headset. So everything that you're hearing right now is through the bi-directional microphone that's built into this headset. We're recording in OBS Studio, this is a lossless recording, and the sensitivity of the microphone in Windows is set to about 60%, so that gives you an idea of the settings that I'm using, and also just a good indication of Everything that you're hearing right now is completely unedited. I haven't modified this at all. It is as I'm recording it right now. Um, in terms of background noise, there is actually a TV going in the lounge room at the moment, which you can't hear, which is a really good sign that this microphone does provide a bit of, I guess, um, 
background noise elimination. Uh, it doesn't really pick up on those, you know, sounds from the TV or whatever it might be. Um, but all in all, this microphone actually is quite good. There is a bit of shape to my voice. It doesn't sound completely monotone, um, but there is a little bit of distortion if I yell a little bit too loud. So just take that into consideration if you're someone that's gaming and you're getting quite excited or quite passionate or you get scared or something. Uh, maybe you're playing a horror game and you yell into the microphone. If you're playing with somebody or you're in a Discord group or something like that, um, everyone else is probably going to hear that. So take that for what you will. Um, but I think if you're just wanting to do like I guess a video conference or use this microphone for just you know chatting online with your friends and stuff like that this is definitely going to do the job so I'd love to know what you guys think of this microphone uh, leave a comment or maybe some feedback or questions if you have any um, in the comment section and other than that we'll go back to the video so in a way it kind of comes down to this audio control that they've got for the particular headphones that we're talking about. Um, the control gives you volume up, volume down adjustment. It can disable or enable the microphone or mute the headphones completely using the little switches on the side, which is really nice. You've also got here a button for 7.1 and also a little EQ button so you can change between three particular modes. You've got a gaming mode, a movie mode, and a music mode, and that's pretty much it. You just cycle through. There's no software for you to download and install to sort of play around with those EQs. If if you wanted to, um, but these are a headphone which basically terminate into a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack into the controller. And then at the other end, if I just get this part, you just have a standard USB 2 connection that goes into your PC or your console. Um, from the headphones to the control here, it's about a meter long, and then you probably get another two meters on that longer side that goes into the USB. So all in all, it's about three meters in length, which if you are thinking about having them from the couch to the TV, it's actually a really good length. It's actually quite a generous amount, probably too much if you're at your desk, but if you're on the couch sitting back from your TV or your console, it's a pretty good length to have. Um, but the 7.1 and the EQs don't really do much in my opinion. I've tried changing them around depending on if I'm playing a game or if I'm watching a movie, if I'm listening to music, and it just doesn't really add anything to uh, the experience, I guess. And that 7.1, that virtual 7.1 surround sound um, is really just not good at all. I can't really tell at all if there is any difference in terms of like if I'm able to hear footsteps more accurately, if they're behind me, if someone's creeping up on me or something like that. Um, it just sounds like everything's just kind of boosted in, in volume by like five or 10 decibels. That's pretty much the only thing that I could really notice. But the thing that makes it really hard to recommend with these headphones is just the sound quality overall. Everything just sounds really muddy. It doesn't sound clear. The bass is lacking, but there's, 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 no, there's no punch there. The mids are kind of all washed out, so if you're listening to someone's voice or maybe someone's singing, it's kind of washed into the background of the mids, the guitars or the keyboards, and then the highs, there's like no treble at all. So everything just sounds very, very, oh, it just sounds a bit crap to be honest. And I even gave them to my partner to sort of get her two, two cents on it, and she put them on her head for about 30 seconds, and even she was like, nah, get these off, they sound terrible. So. Who are these headphones for at this price point? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I feel like you're better spending like as cheap as you can get and getting some like $20, $30 headphones um, or going a bit more and going up to like that $180, $200 mark and getting something that's really, really good. I feel like if I was to get these particular headphones, I'd be like, yeah, nah, I'd rather just use my like Apple headphones or something because they just don't sound very good. And I wonder if them will take is actually testing these products before they're, they're putting them out there because they're testing all their other componentry like their CPU coolers and their power supplies and they're doing rigorous testing on that kind of stuff and their water cooling components. But their peripherals, I don't really feel like they're, they're testing um, them enough or for this particular headphones, maybe what they're doing is they're putting too much into the product and I guess not really uh, delivering a product that can be delivered for $89. I think what they should have done is actually just deliver a product that had really good sound and quality speakers, had them tuned, do a good headset in terms of uh, comfort, and get rid of the 7.1 and get rid of the EQs. I've tested headphones that don't have any of these features that sound way better at this price point, um, and they sell because they're just a good solid pair of headphones. So my feedback for Thermaltake, if they do watch this video, is 
don't try and bite off more than you can chew in terms of headphones or any product for that matter. If you're trying to meet a particular price point so you have a option in the market for people that can't afford a $200 pair of headphones, I would suggest that you just make a really good quality stereo pair of headphones, get them tested by a bunch of people before you release them to the market, make sure that they're comfortable and they just sound great no matter what you're plugging it into, um, regardless if you're using the 3.5 or the USB um, connection and just deliver on something that you know you can stand behind and be happy with rather than people buying it and sort of getting that buyer's remorse when they get home and then having to go back to the shop and saying, oh, you know, I wanna try it, one of those other brands. So that's my two cents. So let me know what you guys think, if you think I'm wrong. Um, I would love to know your thoughts and opinions. Um, now this might sound a bit weird as well, but Thermal Take obviously did send these over for me to review. And I'm actually not gonna be keeping these headphones. I'm gonna be putting them back in the box and I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for one of you guys who might need a pair of headphones for someone or for yourself um, coming up to Christmas. I know that obviously money is tight and so if you wanna enter that giveaway, there'll be instructions in my Instagram um, on how you can do that. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching this video guys and I'll see you in the next video. Um, if you're wanting to watch something now, watch this one, maybe go back and check out some of those other headphone videos that I've done um, that might give you a bit more context. So yeah, cheers guys, see you in the next one.